safety. It's a big thing in the workshop. If you don't feel safe doing something or you just don't feel comfortable, don't do it. You're the only person who can keep you safe. And if you don't do it, no one else can. Hi. Well, we're back in the shop again and uh, being close to Valentine's Day, I uh, figured it was time for me to make a few more flowers. Um, these will be little gifts for my granddaughters. Oh, you see this? Well, that's a neat little tool that I have made. It's just a piece of wood. Um, you know, that's cut to the right length and about the right strength. And a and a abrasive uh, band here from my uh, little belt sander. And uh, by stretching it around, you get this shape, and it makes a nice sanding surface. So anyway, I was just sanding up some stems. Just little pieces of uh, quarter-inch dowling here. Cut uh, four from one length. One length of dowling. Just cleaning off the ends, and these are the sort of flowers that uh, I'm going to make. Um, kind of like a tulip, I guess. I like to make them reasonably thin, and I colour them too, just with uh, bingo daubers, <laughs> uh, any kind of paint, any kind of uh, colouring really that uh, you happen to have, and uh, polish them. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to show you how I make these little uh, little flowers, and make them in a few few steps. The first step is you've got to find uh, an old chunk of wood, <laughs> and we'll put a little three-quarter inch uh, tenon on the end that will fit into a collet chuck. So we'll do that first. I'm just lining up, looking down on the... Yeah, I'll turn it so you can see it on the camera. Looking down on the end and centering uh, between the two edges by eye and then I tip it the other way and do center it the other way and that's good enough for these these flowers tighten up the tailstock and we're all set to, to go again
like this one with the uh, collet. Yes, yeah, so it'd be a nice snug fit. Okay, this is a this is a housing for my collet chuck. Well, it's a collet chuck, I guess you put it together, and uh, I have this one so that it uh, screws onto my headstock like so. Tighten it up on there. Now, the collet goes inside of here. You don't want any dirt or dust or anything in there. Now on the collet. And the collet has a tapped hole in it on the bottom. So I have this drawbar that uh, goes through the back of the lathe through the headstock, comes out and see it pushes the collet out. Collet screws up on it like this. And uh, yeah, loose in there. These uh, blocks we just turned should fit in the collet. And then when we pull the collet back in with the drawbar and tighten up the drawbar, we have the block of wood nicely held for turning. And now all we have to do is shape it to a flower shape. And we can pick, you know, from uh, something we've done before or come up with something new. Uh, it's just your imagination now, and of course the piece of wood determines the size that you can <coughs> go to. So, I think I'll go with my half inch bowl gouge to shape this. So this is going to end up being the base, uh, this end, and this will be the top of the flower. Somewhere around here we'll put a we have to remove the metal so pull it down. Seven, seven eighty. That's how deep we are, I guess. Uh, we ideally want to come down to about here. That's uh, you know two and a half inches. Two and a half inches is uh, right to the face of the of the drill <laughs> shop. So we got that much further to go. Two and a half and two and a half. Get us right to there, that's pretty good. That's good enough. Okay. Now we want this back out the way. Looks like we can do some of this with the old bowl gouge. And we can have a little more speed now. Longer tool rest in that's about right. Bring that over about here. And here I'm just using one of my hollowing tools. Uh, 
you've seen this before if you've watched my videos just a handheld one set up so that it cuts halfway uh, have to have the rest back a little ways because of this this gap on the front here you want it to be supported okay there we go Take some more out here. Uh, still a little bit thicker back here than I am down here. Now, another tool that uh, people are more likely to have today is one of these tools, a little round carbide cutter in the end. We'll give that a try. I'm going to try it down on a little bit of an angle. Yeah, it works very well, doesn't it? And uh, it's running about 2,300. Oh, it give me a better finish inside than uh, my first tool there. Let's just give that another little... I think it's because I'm using it in a shear mode, you know, with it down. chisel and tidy up the outside, finish it off, and we'll sand it. Yeah, still got a bit of an edge on it. Yeah. Now, have a look at that profile. I think I have a little lump here. But it's getting pretty thin here too now. Oh no, there's lots of meat there really. Lots of meat just inside there, yeah. It's pretty thin on the end. It's about a 30 second thick on the end. Uh, yeah. Just give it one more little rub. I always like to leave some kind of a little detail here. This is where I will part it off when uh, when I finish shaping the flower. There. Now I'll take a trusty pencil and we're going to divide this in uh, five. One. Two, three, four, five. By whatever means you like, it's only got to be close. Okay, now I'm going to come down to about there. So I'll just extend those down with the help of uh, the tool rest. Cut down those five lines there. Okay. I'm going to try using this little hacksaw. Oh, seems to work pretty good. Now I just realized what I did last time was a little different. What I did last time was uh, I did my curve lines um, from about halfway between here. 
round to the middle like that. Just give myself a bit of a guideline. I'm afraid uh, There. I need something to support my wrist a little bit. And sort of around like that. Uh, that's not very good. I'll give it a little fuller shape there. Yeah. Now I suppose I could make a little template for this. That would be the smart thing to do so I can get some nice curves but then uh, flowers aren't all exactly the same so <laughs> well, you're not going to cut them exactly the same anyway but before cutting all the way down there it's probably a smart thing to do would be to to do like on where's this one I haven't cut this one yet but to just kind of rough down like this while you still have some support either side and, that piece out, and then go down to the bottom now we're going to try it on this one here anyway Seems to work just fine, like that. Yeah. And just cut this one out. longest part of it. Whoops. Now I don't have uh, uh, an impact carver or anything like that. If I did have I'd probably try that. Being right-handed I, I may have to switch and use it left-handed to come with the grain. Uh, I think one of those would be just the bee's knees probably for doing this. Finish it with a little knife, probably would help. But this little sander here looks pretty good too. There. And all that remains is to do a little sanding on it. And have a piece of dowel with a slot cut in it. Take a piece of this cloth back sanding paper and if you wrap it the right way, 
the action of uh, the pressure of sanding will keep it wrapped on there. pieces. Any little bits of pencil lines left? Yeah. I think I know a little girl who will like this a lot. little granddaughter. There. I'm just going to colour it now. I have to find my paint dobbers wherever they are and I'll be right back. Oh yes. You saw me use this. Worked really well, didn't it? So you'll probably want to make one of these and you'll find it useful for anything where, you know, you don't really need a flat surface. It works well and it'll get down a narrow gap. Okay, there's, there's uh, one more thing to do. I'm not sure. This would be long enough to get in there. I guess, uh, yes, I guess it will. Just about. I have a quarter inch drill here held in a chuck. Just better make sure that it is quarter inch. <laughs> or you're drilling the hole because I have some quarter inch dowling that I want to use for the stem. So Inch drill, so I can just hold this by hand here. And there's a center down in there from uh, the force a bit drill, so I can just push this through. Be careful here, I don't want to uh, damage the ends of these petals, but I want to be far enough in when I part it off that. Uh, I'll have a hole all the way through the bottom. There. That should be okay. If we look at that. Yes. Oh yeah, I'm past the past the collet, so it'll be fine. Okay. Now back looking for those dobbers again. Now. Hi, I'm back. I found my green paint dauber and uh, this is especially good for <coughs> doing the uh, stems uh, which are just quarter inch down and then uh, using the green paint dauber. I guess you could use different colors if you wanted. I just paint them green. And it's best to do this before you glue them in in the flower. Once they're in the flower you can't really get right up to the corner there. You have to find uh, some trick to get your green stain up there. I use Q-tips and things like that. But it's easier if you do it uh, before you glue.
Now, well that holds dry. And I have to and stop the camera for a minute. I, I have some uh, stain here. Uh, well, it's dye. Well, it's whichever one soaks into the wood and you can still see the grain. <laughs> uh, one without real solid pigments in it, I guess. So, uh, I've got a few, the two basic colours here. Blue, black, and uh, red. So I'm going to go and get a few little Q-tips to paint this. Uh, and mix a few of the colours together and see what we can come up with. Okay, I've got some Q-tips. And uh, one thing about stain, it stains everything. So Start with a nice dark color. Nice dark blue. Lovely. Just went to uh, to get a little C clamp, pull on this board, and put it on the lathe way so that uh, less chance of of tipping this, <laughs> which I thought there was a pretty good chance. You know, take some of this yellow. Got a mixture of colours on that one now, so oh, I'll just turn it around and use the other end. Go to the inside. Yeah. 
Oops. Yellow. Oh, I see a little bit in there. Oh, I missed. Yellow and uh, some red. I always like red. Red's a nice color. Should have given it a should have given it a shake first. I think a little brush might be better down there. Uh. Oops. Reds and yellows are nice, aren't they? Yeah, well that's the idea. Now I'll just put that aside to dry. And uh, when it's dry I'm going to put some of my two minute finish on it. And uh, that will be it. Just buff it in. I won't do anything to the inside, it'll just stay kind of a matte yellow colour. But there, pretty little flower, isn't it? And it will have a, a green stem glued in the, that hole that we drilled in the bottom here. When we part it off, uh, the hole will come through and we'll be able to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to paint up these other ones that I've started. Uh, and we'll come back later when this is dry and I'll part it off. Keep an eye on it, you don't want the, the reds running everywhere. There. I suppose if I had a little heat gun, I could dry that a little faster. In fact, I think I might try that. I do have one. Made quite a difference. Dried that up. I think I'm going to put a little bit more of the dark blue. Down in the bottom here. I'd like it to get progressively darker I think. As it goes down. There.
I think that's perfect. Okay. So I'm going to turn the camera off and work on these others. Well, I finished colouring the other flowers, so I'm going to put a two minute finish on this now. Finishes 50% uh, Zinza shellac mixed in the can, bought ready to use, and 50% double boiled linseed oil. Or oh, boiled linseed oil, I think is fine. It's just I use double boiled. Split again to get inside. Well, what I usually do. <laughs> oh, I'm having all kinds of trouble. Okay, start with a fresh uh, edge here. There. Now, whoops, spinning out a bit. oil in it so dispose of your paper towel carefully. Oops. Shiny. Second thinner coat on.
There. Ready for parting off, I think. Little thin parting tool. Get that down in there and part that off. Yeah, just part it off the bottom. Uh, put a little green on that, I guess, from the dauber. And uh, I'll glue the stick in. And then the only thing left to do is to buff it with the bill buffing system. Just to put a little smoothing on it and a little coat of wax. There. So there's, uh, there's our flower. We just... Yeah. A little bit of glue on the, one of the green sticks. it through till, oops, just come out the other end. Side, let it dry. I normally what I'll do, I'll take this in the house and leave it there for a day or two till it dries out uh, thoroughly everywhere. And then I'll buff it and then it will be finished. Yeah, just your imagination, that's uh, all it takes. So here uh the other ones that had the stems in it I was colouring, this one. Now these have to be uh, polished a little bit, yet they didn't get any of the two minute finish. I'll have to put that on a little bit by hand. But then, uh, oops, oh gosh. and they make a pretty nice little bunch of flowers, don't they? Okay. I can make a few more. and. Each of my granddaughters will have a couple, three or so each. Yeah, pretty nice, eh? Okay, that's it. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to come back and show you the buffing because uh, that's pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, now you know how to make the flowers. Uh, 
The only criticism I would have with this one is it's a little bit sharp on the bottom. A little bit square across, across there. Whereas I prefer, you know, if it's nice and round or has a round feature like these other ones do. Yeah. Pretty nice though. Okay. I think they'll be pleased. I am. That's it. Bye now.